Okay, how did you become, the question has to do, you come in, you take over this new role, and how did you get yourself up to speed right. and become knowledgeable in what you're doing? Although you were working at Hughes Aviation, right. so you did have that right. similar background. And so um, what that looked like is that I, um, I my finance background and the understanding the rate structure for government contracting uh, provided a lot of uh, experience that I had coming into the company. The difference was working in millions of dollars to pennies, <laughs> hundreds of dollars, and trying to reconcile that so that you could make payroll. Uh, but the learning pr process for me was certainly um, the size that uh, everything you did mattered. And so every decision you made to, um, to invest in another office space or uh, a, a trip for somebody, that the, everything was very carefully decided. The one thing that I, I didn't know was the relationship with Small Business Administration and all of the requirements that we had to um, follow. Uh, I didn't understand what an LOC was, so that was the only thing written on my board when I walked in the first day, and I'm like, what the heck is LOC? Line of credit, Cindy. We need establishment with a bank. And uh, so it was that um, ability to sell your future and going, believe in us, and getting a line of credit. I did believe in um, the things that I knew didn't make friends at the company with the 10, 15 people there as th my strength was the finance math. So I came in knowing I had a finance person that my father had working for him and saying this, I do not want you to take this personally, but for my trust, and because I didn't know anybody there. I didn't know who to trust. I, I just uh, expected that you guys are all going to love me and uh, it was going to be a grand time. But it was um, the ability to bring in expertise outside. So I hired a CPA firm to help audit my business, which I found a lot of things that, that weren't going to work for me. So I had to make some, some quick changes. And, um, and then also legal services, because you never, you know, my two confidants today are my lawyer and my CPA. And, uh, and then just sitting in meetings. I mean, I had a then um, vice president who, the, the only thing I asked him was invite me to every meeting uh, we are a we team, not an I team, because that really was uh, a different culture with the company uh, when I came in. I'm not about I. And uh, just learning and listening, asking questions, feeling stupid. I mean, I had to get over that I'm not going to know everything. And the other thing, which is, is kind of funny, is I started playing softball in the FAA League. I was athletic. I think they were trying to get me acclimated to D.C. So. They invite, she's an athlete, bring her out to softball. And, and I think that to me, that really, I let my hair down. Um, I could get to know my customers, the employees better. And uh, people started um, seeing that I wasn't just coming in being the president and I knew everything and you guys now answer to me. I think that's, that's a key point too and, and a really important one. You know, do you socialize with your clients? Mm -hmm. You socialize. I mean, and, and take work off the table, but get out there and then yeah. begin to develop relationships because that's you, where you see the metal of people. Yeah, I think you in do. that real out of work environment. Right. And and again, I think the company really went through stages of, of transition. That it, while it was acceptable at 35, 50 employees to possibly do that socializing, even with your own employees, you re there becomes a point that you really need to kind of put that step away line. Yeah. And I, and, it, and I learned this um, the hard way because I was always a, the line of business and professional and I could still be friends with people at the company until the day I had to tell them that that's not really the dress code. Yeah. What you're wearing today can't, no, not acceptable. What? I can't wear my sweats and my t-shirt? I have <laughs> more, that is one of our topics of discussion for more of us because mm -hmm. um, we all talk about our challenges and everything. Dress code has become a major issue. It is. Because casual Friday does not mean flip flop. Uh, exactly. It does not, and a halter top. Or a not. little short skirt. It's like, no, no. But, you know, these 18, 20, and they think that that's professional on yeah. casual Friday. I and know. every woman I talk to who's running a company says, how do you get people? And then, and then that look on their face when you address <gasps> this is like, what? <laughs> it's casual Friday. Yeah, like but my daughter used to give me that look. It's not slutty Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. Are you going to bleep that one out? <laughs> yeah. I think that's okay. I think that that's a compelling point. And people can share this tape. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I think that uh, when Cindy was the legislature, um, exudes that leadership ability and skill and just the presence inside the company that, that I would say is, is walking the talk, which is a, which is a key sign. Where you see your company in 
Uh, oh, so she wants to know, the question is, where is Cindy's company going to be in 15 years? Well, I am planning on continued growth. I, I see today that the company isn't achieving its potential. And so to, as an owner and a participant as CEO, as an employee number 12, that bothers me. And so I will continue um, helping this company uh, on a growth pattern that is sig more significant than we are today. I do believe that we are capable of working outside of just the FAA, who is 70% of our uh, business base, outside of the Navy, further into the Navy and outside of the Navy extensions uh, into other DOD and uh, continued growth there. In the NASA area, we have a lot of opportunities with um, Spaceport America. We have uh, uh, commercial space opportunities that what we're doing today can leverage into. So while I see myself, today we are um, 40 million uh, and 300, about 280 employees, that we will be uh, 100 million in five years, and I think bigger than that based on everything that we're looking at. And, and continue that, to double that. So certainly to grow, but it's a lot of um, really in, uh, fun things like continuing growing my leadership team and, uh, and expanding that, expanding the opportunities on how we're going after that, and then the infrastructure. So certainly continued growth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the trailblazer side, <laughs> yeah. baseball, not golf. Yeah, no. It's uh, it's really, really true. And I think you're right. And I think not being satisfied is really good. It is. And um, always looking, you know, and I don't know that any company will ever live up to its 100% potential. Right. But I think seeking, always questioning that. Yeah. What is our potential? Where can we go? What opportunities lie within? But we didn't talk about NASA. What do you do for NASA? Well, a lot of the stuff that we do is um, research. So we do a lot of research projects for their programs in the next 20 years. And uh, a lot of those efforts are, are limited, so they're short efforts working um, a limited, like a three-month, six-month, if going into nine-month projects, working with large business, trying to help implement some of their programs in space. Uh, so it looks a lot the extension of the FAA in the national airspace, uh, but a lot of that is our applied research uh, skill sets. So it's very interesting. We just need to invest more into getting more. And uh, so they're mainly with the NASA Ames Research Center in California, which will get me closer to being in California, and, um, and then other research centers. We would love to move into the space flight centers as well for some of the opportunities working programmatic.